Here we'll be digging deeper into continuity and discontinuities using limits. First, which of these functions is continuous? Click here if you'd like a refresher on what it means for a function to be continuous. Right, this function is continuous because you can draw it without picking up your pen. Now let's take a closer look at this function over here, which was not continuous. Let's call this function f, and let's say it has a break or discontinuity at x equals a. What can you say about the left and right limits at x equals a? Is the left limit greater than the right limit? Are they equal? Or is the left limit less than the right limit? And if you want to review left and right limits instead, click down here. Exactly. At x equals a, the left and right limits are equal. And they're both equal to the y-coordinate of the hole in this function, which the function is approaching from both the left and the right sides. Now this function is almost continuous, it's just that this point is up here. If this point were down here instead, then this function would be continuous. So for a function to be continuous at x equals a, which of these expressions must be equal to each other? So for a function f to be continuous when x equals a, these three things must be equal. The left limit as x approaches a, the right limit as x approaches a, and these both must equal f of a, the value of the function when x equals a. For this function, if f of a equaled these two limits, then this point would be down here, and the function would be continuous. So wherever these equalities are true for a function, that function is said to be continuous. And if we ever say a function is continuous without specifying where it's continuous, we're usually saying that the function is continuous everywhere, so that these equalities are true at all x-coordinates, that is, for all values of a in these equations. Now that we have a precise definition for continuity, let's look at a few different types of discontinuities. The discontinuity we've been looking at so far is called a removable discontinuity. We'll also be looking at what are called jump and essential discontinuities. Let's stick with this function first. Now a discontinuity is called removable if you can make the function continuous by changing the value of the function at a single point. This function has a removable discontinuity over here because if we change the value at this point to this value down here, then we can make the function continuous. So which of these statements must be true for a discontinuity to be called removable? Exactly. So a discontinuity is removable when the left and right limits equal the same value. Next, let's look at an example of a jump discontinuity. This is what happens when it looks like there was an earthquake in the middle of the function, and it makes a jump at an x-coordinate. If a function has a jump discontinuity at x equals a, then which of these statements must be true? Right. At jump discontinuities, the left limit and the right limit equal different values. So for this function here, when x equals a, the left limit is up here, while the right limit is down here. Also, at jump discontinuities, both of these limits must be finite, meaning they don't go off to infinity. The last type of discontinuity is called an essential discontinuity. That's when at least one of the one-sided limits is infinite or doesn't exist. This function here has an essential discontinuity at x equals a, where it has a vertical asymptote. The left limit is going to negative infinity, and the right limit is going to positive infinity. So here's a quick recap. A function f is continuous at x equals a only when the left and right limits both equal f of a. And here are the three types of discontinuities. Removable, where the left and right limits are equal. Jump, where the left and right limits are different. And essential, where at least one of the left and right limits goes off to infinity or doesn't exist. Let's see what happens when you have limits of more complicated functions. Let's start off with two different limits. What's the limit of x squared as x approaches 3? And what's the limit of 2x as x approaches 3? If you'd like to review how to evaluate finite limits like these, then click over here. 
Exactly. This limit equals 9, and this limit equals 6. Let's take a closer look to see what these equations really mean. Here's a sketch of the function x squared. Now saying this limit equals 9 means that as x gets closer and closer to 3 from either side, x squared approaches 9. And now here's a sketch of 2x. For this function, as x gets closer and closer to 3 from either side, 2x is approaching 6. So these limits are not saying anything about plugging in a value of 3 for x, they're just saying that as x gets very, very close to 3, x squared approaches 9 and 2x approaches 6. Now if we were to add these two limits together, then we'd have 9 plus 6, which equals 15. But what value do you get if the two functions, x squared and 2x, are added inside the limit? In other words, as x gets very, very close to 3, what value does x squared plus 2x approach? Don't worry, this is not a trick question. Right, this limit equals 15. So the limit of the sum of these two functions equals the sum of the limits of the two functions. So when you're adding two limits that approach the same x-coordinate, in this case, both of these are limits as x approaches 3, you can combine them. So as you saw, the sum of these two limits equals the limit of the sum of these two functions. Next, let's try evaluating these three limits. The limit of the difference, the product, and the quotient of these two functions. In other words, as x approaches 3, what values do these expressions approach? Nicely done. This limit is 3, which is 9 minus 6. This one is 54 which is 9 times 6, and this one is 1.5, which is 9 divided by 6. In general, if you have limits of sums, differences, products, or quotients, you can split up the limits. Just make sure that when you split up the limits, both of these limits are approaching the same x-coordinate as the original limit over here. Now these four rules usually work, but not always. There are a few exceptions. Let's take a look at one of those exceptions. The limit as x approaches 0 of x squared over x. Let's try splitting this up into two separate limits. The limit as x approaches 0 of x squared divided by the limit as x approaches 0 of x. First, evaluate these two limits. Right, both of these limits equal 0 because as x gets very, very close to 0, both of these functions, x squared and x, approach 0. So this limit divided by this limit equals 0 divided by 0. And any fraction with a 0 in the denominator is undefined. So this expression is undefined. But let's take a look at our original limit again. Is this limit undefined, or does it equal a specific value? Evaluate this limit, and if you'd like a little help, click here. Right, this limit equals 0. The graph of this function looks just like the graph of y equals x, except x cannot equal 0, because that would mean there's a 0 in this denominator here. So this graph has a hole at x equals 0. And you can see that this limit equals 0, because as x gets closer and closer to 0, without equaling 0, the y value of this function also approaches 0. So while splitting the limits gave us a result that was undefined, this limit actually equals 0. Let's take a look at another limit by flipping this one over. The limit as x approaches 0 of x over x squared. If we were to split this up, we'd still have 0 over 0, which is undefined. So try evaluating this limit, and if you think it might not exist, click over here. Okay, let's take a closer look at this limit. A good first step for evaluating this limit is to simplify the function inside it. What's an equivalent way to write x over x squared? Is it x, x squared, or 1 over x? Exactly, x over x squared equals 1 over x. Now here's a graph of the function 1 over x. This limit is saying that as x approaches 0 from either side, what value does 1 over x approach? Is it positive infinity? which 1 over x is approaching from the right side, negative infinity, which 1 over x is approaching from the left side, or does the limit not exist? 
and if you'd like to review right and left sided limits instead, click here. Exactly. Because the left and right limits do not equal each other, this limit does not exist. So the limit as x approaches 0 of x over x squared does not exist, while the limit of x squared over x equals 0. In both of these cases, splitting the limits up into two limits was not helpful, giving us a result of 0 over 0, which was undefined. So as we said earlier, these rules for splitting limits when you're adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing usually work, but not always. You should watch out for limits that, when you split them up, give you results like 0 over 0, infinity over infinity, or infinity minus infinity. Whenever you see limits like these, proceed with caution. Let's look at another example. The limit as x goes off to infinity of x squared minus x. Now as x gets really big, both of these functions, x squared and x, also get really, really big. So both of these limits equal infinity. This is a case where it looks like we have infinity minus infinity, which means we need to be very careful. Let's take a closer look at the function x squared minus x. Which of these is the correct graph for this function? Right, this is the correct graph for the function x squared minus x. Now as x gets really, really big, does this function go off to positive infinity? Does it approach 0? Or does it go off to negative infinity? Exactly, this limit goes off to positive infinity. As x gets bigger and bigger, this function keeps getting higher and higher. Let's look at one last limit by switching this one up. What's the limit as x approaches infinity of x minus x squared? If you're not sure, try plugging in bigger and bigger values of x and seeing whether this function approaches positive infinity, 0, or negative infinity. Right, this limit equals negative infinity. So here are two examples where splitting the limits up would give us infinity minus infinity. This limit equals positive infinity, while this limit equals negative infinity. So to summarize, when you're adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing functions inside limits, you can split the limits up. These rules usually work, but not always. Watch out for limits that give you 0 divided by 0, infinity divided by infinity, or infinity minus infinity. Evaluate these limits carefully.